Hey, Ashley, how are you and George doing? Is everything okay over there? Hi, Vicky. My husband and I are hanging in there. How about you? How are things going on your end? Ah, oh, well, you know how he is, honey. It's just the usual here. Living all by myself in this big old house can get pretty lonely at times, I won't lie. But hey, I suppose it can't be helped, right? I mean, who would want to live with an old lady like me? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling that way. It's a shame that George and I can't spend more time with you. You know how it is, though. We're both swamped with work and barely have a moment to breathe. I totally get it. You guys must be living this glamorous life every single day, huh? Attending fancy parties and dinner with those high and mighty company executives, looking all dolled up and dining at posh, expensive places. It must be so good to be you two. Life's just a bed of roses for you both. What do you mean, Vicky? Just think about it. While you and my son are living it up in this extravagant lifestyle, here I am all alone in this house, barely scraping by with the bare minimum. You know, a decent human being would actually pay attention to these kind of things. It's making me wonder if you even consider me as part of the family anymore. What are you getting at? I said what I said, and I mean it. It just doesn't seem right that you get to enjoy the high life living it up like some kind of elite while I'm living here like a beggar. Don't you think I deserve a little more than that? I understand where you're coming from. So, you're suggesting that George and I should send you even more money? George is already sending you $2,000 a month. Isn't that enough? I get that from the outside. It might seem like we're living this lavish life with all the dinners and parties, but you have to understand that these events are actually part of my job as a jewelry designer. It's not as glamorous as it appears. Trust me, attending these events is necessary for my business, and they come with their own hefty expenses. It's all part of the work we do. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You always bring up that excuse just so you can keep living your fancy life without having to support me in any way, right? How ungrateful of you. What are you talking about? We have been providing you with financial support and we're still doing so. Remember, it's $2,000 a month, Vicky. That's not a small amount, you know, especially for someone living alone like you. Well, I guess it could be enough for someone who lives within their means, but that's not me. I'm just not that type of person. I want all my needs met. I can't bear the thought of living like some second-class citizen. It would crush my pride. All my friends come from wealthy families. If they found out I'm struggling financially, they'd probably just laugh in my face. I see. So it really boils down to your pride, huh? You're simply afraid of losing face in front of your friends? Is that what this is all about? I mean, it's not exactly like that, but you see, I'm just looking out for your son and my son's reputation. Just think about it for a moment. If people see me looking all shabby with messy hair, what kind of impression would that give? I don't want anyone getting the wrong idea and thinking that you and George are mistreating me. It's all coming from a place of good intentions, you know. Why don't we cut to the chase, Vicky? Let's be honest here. You've already gone through the monthly allowance George gave you. So you're texting me now to ask for more. Am I right? Oh, Ashley, you're so sweet and understanding. I'm really grateful to have such a thoughtful and considerate daughter-in-law like you. It's true, dear. Even though I'm completely out of money, my friends just keep insisting that I throw a party at my place. What should I do in this situation? I can't simply tell them I can't afford it because that would be so embarrassing and humiliating. Another party? Seriously? How many times do I have to say it, Vicky? If you can't generate your own income, then you shouldn't be spending beyond the amount you're given. Come on, it's not like $2,000 is some crazy big sum or anything. Hear me out, just this one time, all right? I'm just asking for an extra 2,000, then I'll change my ways. I swear this is the absolute time I'll ever ask you for any more cash. Hold on a second, $2,000 more? We're not rolling in dough, you know. Come on, don't be such a cheapskate with your own mother-in-law. It's an upscale party and $2,000 is peanuts compared to what I have to dish out. Please, I'm begging you. Think about yourself and me here. Are you sure you're not gonna ask for more money? Of course I won't ask for more. This is really disheartening to realize you have such little faith in me. Why don't you ask George directly? He's the one who sends you money every month, not me. I did consider that, but you know how he is. If he finds out that I went overboard with the money he sent this month, he'll most likely freak out on me. You're his wife, the only one who could talk some sense into him. Ah, I see. 
Oh, by the way, while we're on the topic, I might need some extra cash to splurge on a new dress and a matching bag for the upcoming party. Cress alone will set me back about $5,000, and the bag's about another $5,000. What? Didn't I make it clear that we don't have a ton of money just lying around for you to spend without any thought? What do you mean? It's a party where all my friends will be. So I want to look fabulous. It's my right to dress up and feel good, you know. Look, there's nothing wrong with dressing up nicely to make a good impression on others. I totally get that. But what I'm trying to say is that we need to be more mindful of our spending. Why not consider a more affordable dress or a stylish two-piece suit? I actually know a great place where you can find them at a reasonable price. Oh no! Are you seriously suggesting that I wear some cheap, low-quality clothes? That's absolutely outrageous! I refuse to put anything on that's tacky or gross. Listen here, here's what we'll do. Just talk to George and ask him if he'll give me the money. I'll take care of the rest, okay? Trust me on this. Hi, George. There's something I want to talk to you about. It's your mother. Oh no. What does she want now? Please don't tell me she asked you for money again. Well, you won't believe it. She's done it again. She claims she's already blown through the $2,000 you sent her this month, and now she wants another $2,000. Apparently, she's throwing some lavish party at her place and wants her friends to come over. What? A party? You've got to be kidding me. I can't believe she squandered her entire allowance for the month when we're not even halfway through it yet. See, I told you we should have set some boundaries right from the start and not given her any money. I know, I know. Not giving her any money is easier said than done. She's relentless. She'll keep bugging me and causing a scene until she gets what she wants. I know my mom too well. If I ignore her texts and calls, she'll just show up at our doorstep and demand money in person. She's capable of waiting outside our house all day until I cave in and hand over some cash. She's always asking for more and more. We can't keep giving in to her never-ending money demands. If we keep enabling her, it's only going to get worse in the long run. So what's our plan now? Hey, I get it. We are both at our wits end with my mom's constant money requests. Here's my idea. I'll set up a credit card in her name specifically for her expenses. That way, she won't keep bothering us or asking for money. Yeah, that might just do the trick and finally get her off our backs. Are you really sure that's a good idea? I mean, I'm worried it might actually make things worse instead of better. It'll be fine. Trust me on this. Hey, Ashley, sweetie, are you there? I'm at the mall right now, but there seems to be an issue with my card. I can't use it to pay my bills anymore. Can you please help me out here? The cashier is giving me this weird look like I'm some kind of alien or something. What? I can't believe you're going shopping again. How many times have you maxed out the money on the card that George gave you? Oh, maybe a couple of times. It's not like it's the end of the world. Stop trying to make me feel guilty about it. I'm not trying to guilt trip you, but it's important to be more mindful of how you spend your money. George and I work hard to earn our money, you know. Please. Let's be more considerate and thoughtful about our expenses. Oh, you're being so irritating, Vicky. First George, and now you're nagging me too. Feels like nobody cares about me anymore. Did George not warn you about overspending? He specifically asked you to communicate before making any major purchases. But what did you do? You went ahead and bought an expensive ring without even giving a heads up. The bill turned out to be astronomical. And now George can't afford it. Do you think having a credit card means unlimited spending without any consequences? Vicky, you've crossed the line here. This is completely unacceptable. Hey, cut it out with that tone. You're not my mother, so don't try and boss me around. Remember, I'm the one who brought your husband into this world, so my role in this family is pretty darn important. Now quit wasting my time and tell me what's wrong with my card. I don't have time to play games with you. Oh, the card? Yeah. George and I had a talk about it. To be honest, your overspending has been putting a lot of strain on us financially. 
So we decided it's best to lower your monthly spending limit on the card. What? That's just plain ridiculous and you're well aware of it. There's no fairness when comparing our lifestyles. My desires for enjoyment and luxury isn't that different from your need to dress up at work or attend fancy events. That's where the misunderstanding lies, Vicky. Attending events like products launches and parties is all part of our job, and they often happen in upscale venues. We do it for the sake of our careers, you know? <sighs> I don't know how many more times I'll have to explain this to you. Yada yada, I've heard enough. It doesn't look like you're working at all. You're just having fun. Whatever you say, just please be more mindful of your spending moving forward. Remember, there's a limit on your credit card. So use it wisely. But, but what am I supposed to do with this bill? I'm at the checkout right now. And my card isn't working. Please, Ashley, I need your help. Please. I don't know, Vicky. That's something you'll have to handle on your own. Take it as a lesson to be more mindful of the money you're given instead of spending it on unnecessary things. Ashley, are you hiding something from me? Huh? What do you mean, Vicky? Stop pretending like you don't know what I'm talking about. I heard it through the grapevine that you're planning to live abroad, isn't that right? Who told you that? You don't need to know, just answer me. Is it true that you're gonna live overseas? Well, technically there is some truth to it. A foreign brand approached me with a business expansion opportunity overseas. It could be a fantastic chance for me to establish myself among top tier designers. George thinks it's a golden opportunity we shouldn't miss, but I haven't made a final decision yet. Oh, I knew it! This has been your plan all along, hasn't it? You're just trying to pull a fast one on me and leave me behind so you can have a fancy life abroad. You think it's the perfect chance for you to get rid of me. Just as I expected. I knew you'd react this way. Listen, let me make everything clear once and for all. This is all about my work. Not about having a good time. I'm simply doing my best to establish my business and make a name for myself in the jewelry market. Oh, come on now, I don't buy it. I bet you're planning to pack up and settle there for good, aren't you? I won't stand for being left behind like this. It's just not fair. If you really have to go overseas, then you better be taking me with you. George is my son after all, and I wanna be close to him. I don't want to live that far away from him, no way. You really are persistent, aren't you? You got that right. As a mother, I'm all about protecting my family. I won't ever let you have it your way. There's no chance that your wicked plan will succeed. You know what, Vicky? Both George and I are exhausted from trying to reason with you. Honestly, we've reached our limit. So here's my offer. My husband and I have decided to pay for a week-long trip just for you. We'll take care of your flight and hotel expenses too. This way, you can relax, unwind, and do whatever you want. I know you've been wanting to go on a vacation for a while, haven't you? Oh, are you sure, Ashley? Are you serious? Yes, I am. Oh my goodness, that sounds absolutely fantastic. Yes, count me in for the trip. I can't wait to pamper myself in a whole new place. Living here all by myself has been incredibly dull, you have no idea. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, Ashley. I truly appreciate it. Ashley, what's going on? Can't you hear me calling out to you? Or are you purposely choosing to ignore me? What's the matter now, Vicky? George and I are quite busy making arrangements for our overseas trip. Shouldn't you be getting ready for your vacation by now? I should, but there's a little problem. What kind of problem? You know, if I'm going on a trip, I'd love to do some shopping there as well. Could you please spare me some money? It would be really helpful. Money? What about the card George gave you? That card? Well, he already took it away from me. Oh yeah, I forgot. He told me that you feared you might misuse the card with different currency rates overseas. So he took it away. That's right, so I really need you to give me some money. I've completely run out of cash. I'm sorry, but I can't give you money without George's approval. I hope you understand. What? That's just plain rude, you know. How could you even suggest sending me off on a trip without providing any money? That's not fair at all. That's on George to decide. You should ask him directly about this. Hey, Ashley. Guess what? I'm already back from my trip abroad. A surprise, surprise. 
I see. Did you enjoy your trip? Oh, you can bet I did. The trip was absolutely amazing and everything was just fabulous. You have no clue how much fun I had. And a huge thanks for booking that incredible hotel for me. I had the most wonderful time staying there. Honestly, it was the best week-long trip overseas I've ever had in my entire life. I wish I could have invited all my friends to join me, but unfortunately, they were all tied up with their own commitments. That's great to hear. And you know what the best part is? I brought back a ton of souvenirs with me. At first, I thought there was no way I could bring all those things back here, but somehow, by a stroke of luck, I made it happen. Oh, I'm quite the capable woman if I do say so myself. Well, I have to admit, I may have overspent a little bit, but, you know, it was totally worth it. What? You overspent money? Where on earth did you even get that money from in the first place? George never mentioned anything about giving you back the credit card. Money? Well, I actually used the money you had saved up for me. Thank you, sweetheart. It's incredibly kind for you to do that to me. I'm truly touched by your thoughtfulness. The money I've saved up for you? I have no recollection of such money. Of course you have. Maybe it just slipped your mind for a moment. Don't worry about it. Well, I do have some savings in my bank account for business emergencies, but you couldn't possibly withdraw cash from it. Honestly, I have no memory of it. But I found $20,000 in your house's sideboard drawer, so it should be your money, right? $20,000? Honestly, I'm a little confused. Why would such money be there? I can't imagine us keeping such a large amount of cash at home. But what's even more concerning is that you took the money from my house without even asking me about it. Taking something without permission is considered theft, even within family. Do you grasp how serious the situation is? What? Don't blow this out of proportion. It's not really that big of a deal. It's just a family matter after all. No, it's not that simple. See, I have no idea where that money came from. Maybe George had set it aside for an important business deal or something? I honestly don't know. But taking someone else's money without their permission is considered a crime, regardless of the circumstances. I'm sure you're well aware of that, aren't you? Yes, I did take the money, so what? You two live so extravagantly, why can't I have a little of that? Think of it as doing a favor for your parent. Your reasoning is completely inappropriate. I'll definitely have to talk to George about this. I know he won't be pleased when he learns about it. Oh, really? Just go ahead and spill the beans to him then. Do you honestly think you can intimidate me with that sort of threat? George is my son and he'll understand. Plus, $20,000 isn't even a huge deal. He'll make that back in no time, tenfold. Oh, and don't forget to pass along my thanks when you talk to him. Mom, it's me, George. I just wanted to let you know that you've made a huge mistake. Perhaps the biggest one of your life. Huh? What are you talking about, my dear? What kind of mistake do you mean? I didn't do anything wrong. I simply took the money at your house because I thought you were saving it up for me, right, dear? I know deep down you have a soft spot for me, and even though you may act cold at times, I know you still care for this old lady. Can't you see what's happening here? I had to withdraw that money from my bank account 10 days ago for an urgent payment. The reason I needed cash right away was because of you. See? I knew all along the $20,000 was meant for me. Oh, I'm so proud of you, George. Even with your busy schedule, you make sure to still think about me. It warms my heart. You still don't get it, do you? I'm talking about your huge debts. Debts? You know, you know about them? How do you know? How did you find out? Do you honestly believe you could keep it hidden from me forever? I know everything. When I set a limit on your credit card, you started borrowing money from different sources behind my back including consumer finance cards and credit cards you opened without my knowledge. That's precisely why I had to gather the cash, to assist you in paying off your mounting debt. And I suppose you've figured out by now where that cash went, haven't you? It was the $20,000 you carelessly spent during your trip. But, but why cash? Why didn't you just help me pay back my debts through your bank? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I have plans to directly pay off the institutions through bank transfers. However, for the sake of maintaining trust with our business partners and bookkeeping, I preferred to keep fewer records in our bank accounts. That's why I made the decision to withdraw the cash and handle the payments individually. Supporting your overseas trip was like a farewell gift, knowing that my wife and I won't be able to take care of you as we used to after we move abroad. You see, I did all these things for you. But what did you do? You had to go and steal money from me, like a true thief. I'm really disappointed in you, Vicky. It's clear that you can't be helped. Goodbye, mother. 
This will be our last conversation. No, please, honey. I had no idea that money was meant to pay off my debts. If I'd have known, I would never have done such a terrible thing. Please, George, listen to me. Please don't abandon me like this. Ashley, if you're reading this message, please respond as soon as possible. I'm in a really tough spot right now. I keep getting payment demands nearly every day, and it seems like George is avoiding my calls. No matter what I do, I can't seem to reach him. Please, Ashley, you're my only hope. Please answer me. I was taken aback by George's drastic actions towards his own mother. If he had used the money he had set aside to pay off Vicky's debts, we might have avoided this situation altogether. Now, Vicky was bombarded with collection letters and constant calls from finance companies and lenders, leaving her feeling helpless. It felt like something out of a drama that I had only seen on TV. I had mentioned it to George before, but I couldn't predict how he would respond. Vicky pleaded for help, emphasizing that it was a son's duty to assist his mother. The call ended, and when George returned home, I informed him about it. However, he coldly dismissed it, claiming that Vicky had wasted her own opportunities. Following George's lead, I decided to block Vicky's number despite her persistent calls. As the day of our move overseas approached, I needed to finish packing. Looking around the still cluttered room, I couldn't shake the lingering feeling of helplessness in the face of Vicky's predicament. It turned out that Vicky had to sell her house to settle her debts in addition to the $20,000 that George had intended for repayment. The amount of hidden debts was substantial, and even after selling her property, she couldn't fully clear them. Their total balance was unimaginable, and our family home was gone. George, though somewhat saddened, acknowledged that there was nothing we could do. Losing the house where one grew up must have felt like an immense loss. George, having lost his place to return to because of his estranged relationship with his mother, must have been experiencing a deep sense of loss as well. Vicky now lived in a modest apartment, struggling to repay the remaining debts with her part-time job. Finding work at her age must be challenging. And I couldn't help but feel a little bit of sympathy for her. However, the consequences of her spending had led to the situation. So she must bear some responsibility. Even for the elderly, taking responsibility for one's actions is necessary. Despite the changes, my business was thriving overseas and the move had brought unexpected offers from other brands. It was something I couldn't have imagined back home. Although I appreciated all the opportunities, I was so busy that I had barely had time to sleep. George too was occupied with various tasks. At this rate, having children was still a distant thought. I pondered this as I gazed at the foreign cityscape outside the window.